Hello, my name is Jelena Karapetrovic. Uh, on behalf of Cyber Infrastructure Architect team, I will talk about introduction to Linux. This introduction to Linux workshop is designed for novices. Uh, we will cover finding, downloading the terminal, navigating around uh, using the command line and creating directories and files. Also, we will talk about the editors, text editors. This workshop is the first step uh, in feeling comfortable using the command line and uh, later utilizing this discovery cluster. Uh, discovery uh, is intended for a more complex uh, research analysis. So if you are not able to complete your analysis on your personal computer, um, discovery is a cluster of computers and is much faster and allows uh, solving much more complicated uh, computations. So this is just the first step. Uh, you do need basic knowledge of Linux and we will cover all of that now. Uh, our objectives are uh, to know how to access the command line, uh, how we will apply a Linux directory structure, use basic Linux commands and use text editors via nano. So why are we using Linux? You may have already used Windows or Mac operating systems, uh, but here we will learn the benefits of Linux operating system over other choices. Linux is an open source operating system developed in the 1960s, and some of its advantages are uh, cost, it is free to obtain, security, there is no need for virus protection software, Freedom. Uh, with Linux, you have the power to control just about every aspect of your operating system. Software. There are many software choices for doing any specific task. The vast majority of Linux software is free and open source. Not only are you getting the software for no charge, but you have the option to modify the source code and add more features if you understand the programming language. So. So uh, we first want to access Linux. Uh, to do so, we need to download Putty. And here is the address for that. Putty.org. Uh, and you can download it by following steps. Here, uh, you can select if you have 32 bit or 64 bit system. Okay. It is really quick. We'll, we'll wait while it loads. Another thing we want to download uh is vpn nmsu vpn uh so a vpn server makes your computer access the internet by first routing through another network so vpn provides you access to secure services on a network that would otherwise be protected so uh we can do it through NMSU VPN. Okay. I will just open Patty. And this is the window that we will need later to log in. Uh, let's first connect to VPN since we're off campus. So go to this address or just uh, simply type in your uh, Google search VPN and MSU. So this is the address. 
you need to log in with your NMSU credentials. Okay. And download. So VPN is needed only if you want to access off campus. If you're on campus, you don't need VPN. Okay, uh, now we need to install it. Finish. And this is the application that you will have, Cisco Any Connect. And at the bottom right corner of your uh, monitor, you will see vpn.nmsu.edu. That's the address that you want. So VPN NMSU.edu. Click Connect. And here enter your MyNMSU credentials. and click OK. So this is the first step. Now we can, act, we can use PATI. So here for host name, use web, web.nmsu.edu. OK. Uh, click Open and log in again with your NMSU credentials. So before we explore the commands used to manipulate the Linux environment, we should take a quick look at the structure of the environment itself. Take a look at the bottom right uh, picture. So Microsoft Windows users will find the Linux file system to be a familiar structure because it is basically the same. You can think of a Linux file system as an upside down tree. The part of the operating system responsible for managing files and directories is called the file system. It organizes our data into files which hold information and directories also called folders which hold files or other directories. Several commands are frequently used to create, inspect, rename, and delete files and directories. To start exploring them, we will go uh, to our open shell window. So here, uh, in this diagram, dogs and cats, dogs and cats are directories. Cats contain two files while dogs contain three files. So the first line 
in our command prompt shows only a prompt indicating that the shell is waiting for input. Uh, so, you see here the dollar sign, that's how we, uh, that's our prompt. And when you type a command and press return or enter, the shell reads your command, evaluates or executes it, prints the output of your command, loops back and waits for you to enter another command. So let's try that. Let's type pwd. pwd is for print working directory. So we basically asked, where am I now? And Linux responded, it gave us the output, and now it awaits our, our another command. Directories are like places. At any time while we are using the shell, we are in exactly one place called our current working directory. Commands mostly read and write files in the current working directory, here. So knowing where you are before running a command is important. So pwd shows you where you are. So uh, home is that's my home directory. That's where I am currently. At the top is the root directory that holds everything else. We refer to it using a slash character. So this is home directory. This is the leading slash in home iskra. We know that our current working directory, home iskra, is stored inside home because home is the first part of its name. Similarly, we know that home is stored inside the root directory. This is root. Because its name begins like that. Same as here in our Linux, in our example, if you want, uh, for example, root directory, so slash, and then cats, And then lions. Uh, in this example, lions are part of cats. So now let's learn the command that will let us see the contents of our own file system. We can see that what's in our home directory by running ls. List. So if you go here and type ls, we will get some files that I have on my computer. It prints the names of the files and directories in the current directory. For example, if your current directory were cats and you wanted to see what it contained, you would type ls and the output would be the following. So lions and tigers. If you listed what's in, inside dogs folder, you would see wolves, dingoes, and hyenas. So note this, that unlike many other operating systems, Linux is case sensitive. In other words, if you type ls instead of ls, Linux will not recognize the command. This applies to file names like lions and tigers as well. So uh, lions are not the same as lions. Now, let me put you in an imaginary situation where you can put your Linux skills to work. Imagine that you work in a pet shop that has recently purchased a Linux system to keep track of its animals. You've been asked to create a file structure which contains a file 
for each type of animal in the pet shop. Your first attempt was to create a flat file structure with all of the animals in the same directory. This structure is shown here with the files represented by pictures of animals. Upon further consideration, you realize that as you add more and more animals to the structure, it will be easier to manage if you put them in separate directories. For example, different directories for cats and dogs. So, it is time to start organizing our animals' files. First, we'll create a directory pets, this one here. And we will add folders called cats, dogs, monkeys, snakes, fish. The command to create a directory is make directory, mk dir. For example, to make a directory named pets, you would type mkdir pets. The command ls will list the contents of your current directory after you hit the enter key. So you can see here that we have a new uh, directory pets. And remember that you need to type the command in lowercase. Now, we, we need to change our directory to pets if you want to add the animals. We can actually change our location to a different directory so we are no longer located in our home directory. The command to change location is cd followed by a directory name to change our working directory. cd stands for change directory. which is a bit misleading. The command doesn't change the directory. It changes the shell's idea of what directory we are in. Let's say we want to move to the pets directory. We can use the following command. cd pets. You will notice that cd doesn't print anything. This is normal. Many shell commands will not output anything to the screen when successfully executed. But if we run pwd after it, we can see that we have changed our directory now. You're in pets now. If we run ls, it lists the contents of our pets directory, which is currently empty. We will now add directory cats and list the contents of pets directory. A new directory now exists. So let's do the same thing for dogs, monkeys, snakes and fish. and list. Okay. Now, let's add a folder beta under fish. Let's add hamsters, right? And parrots. So, Birds and hamsters. So we have everything. Okay. So now, if we want uh, to create beta sander fish, we need to change directory. So we will go to directory fish. This directory is currently empty. So we will create another directory called betas.
Note that the files are listed in alphabetical order from left to right. Birds, cats, dogs, and so on. With our method so far, CD, change directory, can only see subdirectories inside your current directory. There are different ways to see directories above your current location. So here is the simple one cd dot dot. This is a special directory name, meaning the directory containing this one or the parent of the current directory. So let's try cd dot dot. Oops, cd space dot dot. And now if we go to ls or pwd, we will see that, our, that we are back in pets. So we are currently here. Uh, let's assume that we want to remove the directory fish. One option is to use rmdir. And this command removes directory if it is empty. Each directory removed must contain no files or directories, or it cannot be removed by this command. So, if we do rmdir fish, we will get an error, the end directory not empty. If any specified directory is not empty, RMDIR will not remove it and will proceed to try and remove other directories you specified. To remove both a parent directory and the subdirectory of that parent, the subdirectory must be specified first. This way, the parent directory will be empty when remove directory tries to remove it. This means that you would need to remove directory betas first, then fish with this command. However, if you want to delete directories that are not empty, use the command rm r slash r. For example, to remove fish, we would type rm r fish. And if we list the content, we will, we will see that fish are not here anymore. So this is what our tree looks like now. Now, let's imagine that we just got a new three month old female poodle. We want to make note of this in a text file and we will use the text editor nano. The command nano will open a user inter interface. So let's type nano. This is user interface. Now simply let's enter some characteristics. For example, read poodle. Gender female. Color black. Age three months. So note here at the bottom left corner how you can get help exit. So for example, if I want to exit, I would need to type control and X. That's what I want to press. So control X.
you will be asked if you want to save changes. I do. And file name, uh, let's call it Poodle1. Okay, and enter. So there are many different shortcuts that you can use and no need to memorize it. For example, on this address, you can see lots of commands, shortcuts and combinations. Now, let's list our directory. You'll see that we have different directories and that we have a file that we have just created, Poodle1. Here is what we got. Now, let's repeat this for file Rottweiler with the following characteristics, breed, Okay, Rottweiler, gender male, black brown, four months. Let's do the, the same thing. And let's press Control X, yes, and save it. Now we have both our files here. And to move our Poodle and the Rottweiler to our folder Dogs. We want them moved here. So to move a file, We would use command mv and then file name and then destination folder. So in our example, we would type mv Poodle one and then docs. So MV, this is our file name and the destination folder where, where we want to place it. Let's do it again. MV, Rottweiler, docs. In this case, if docs, if our destination fold folder does not exist, it will be created with the exact content of file Poodle1 and Poodle1 will disappear. However, if docs already exist, its contents will be replaced with that of Poodle1 and file Poodle1 will still disappear. So the file source location must be different than the file source destination. So if we list what we have now, uh, no files pull one Rottweiler, but if we go to docs and list that, we will see our two files. Okay, this is what our tree looks like now. <laughs> so let's try another thing. Let's make another directory with exotic animals. Because from experience, we know that our pet shop rarely gets new monkeys and new snakes. 
we would like to clear the clutter. And instead of having separate directories for both under pets, we want to create a directory exotic and put monkeys and snakes there. First, we will create a folder exotic. So let's go back. Okay. Uh, let's create folder exotic. Here it is. Then we will move directories monkeys and snakes into this new directory. So let's move monkeys to the static. And let's move snakes to exact. You can see that our directory exotic contains monkeys and snakes now. Okay, now uh, it seems that we will have high demand for dogs. The customers keep asking for a small breed. It might be a good idea to separate directory dogs to small, medium, and large. Let's try that over here. After that, we can place, for example, Poodle into medium breed and Rottweiler to large breed group. So let's go to dogs. Okay, we're currently there. And let's make folders. Large, medium, and small. Now let's move our poodle into medium group. And let's move Rottweiler to large group. Now we have organized the pet shop database pretty well. It will be easy to add files when new animals arrive, along with detailed information about them. We should know how to remove files if some of the animals is sold. So for example, we want to remove our poodle. And remember, we can use our MR command. So first, uh, we would go into folder medium and we would remove our poodle. And if we list our folder again, we would see that it is currently empty. Okay, so now, for example, we have also noticed that there are no hamsters in the store, but we just got two rabbits. So no hamsters, we have new rabbits. Let's rename the directory hamsters to rabbits. How shall we do that? Okay. To rename files, we would use mv command again. This is, renaming is simply a case of moving a file or directory from one name to another. The general expression for renaming files and directories will be mv, all name, new name. So let's go to pets. And let's move 
name hamsters to rabbits. So we would do it by typing MV hamsters rabbits. And when we list, we'll see that there are no hamsters anymore, but we have rabbits instead. So note that the destination location must be the same with the source location, and the file name must be different. This is what our new tree looks like now. And for example, if you want to add another dog into our large group with very similar characteristics, for example, another Rottweiler, let's copy file. So we would use cp, which file, and file copy. So let's try that. Uh, we'll go into docs. large dogs and let's copy our Twiler into new file you can use command cat to inspector file. So our copied file contains exactly the same information as our Rottweiler file. So how to get help? There are two common ways to find out how to use a command and what options it accepts. For example, uh, we can pass a help option, so some command and then flag help. ls help. So by executing this command, you can see that there are many different options and guidelines how to use ls command. You can use, we can read its manual with man. M-A-N, short for manual, ls. Here is the manual for using the command. Of course, there is a third way to access help for commands, searching the internet via your web browser. When using internet search, including the phrase Unix man page in your search query will help to find relevant results. So, Man command or manual turns your terminal into a page with a description of the ls command and its options and maybe even some examples. And to navigate through the ma manual pages, you may use up and uh, up and down arrow to move line by line, or try spacebar to skip up and down by a full page. And to quit, you can simply type Q. Now you're back. So, let's try one more thing. For example, 
what does the command ls do when used with the l option? Let's try that. Let's go back. Okay. So if we do ls l, see the difference. When we typed only ls, we saw that we have directories large, medium, and small docs. But when we used l, uh, additional l, uh, we can see that now we have more information. So, for example, you see when that file uh, directory is created and what are our permissions. For example, is it to read, to write, to execute, and so on. So, as you may now see, using a bash shell is strongly dependent on the idea that your files are organized in a hierarchical file system. Organizing things in this way helps us keep track of our work. It's possible to put hundreds of files in our home directory, just as it's possible to file hundreds of printed papers on our desk, but it's a self-defeating strategy. So, what, what could we learn from this presentation that Information is stored in files, which are stored in directories. So you have directories and files that are inside these directories. Directories can also store directories, and all of this forms a directory tree. You should now be able to navigate the tree by using commands such as pwd, to print working directory, cd to change directory, or ls to list your current directory. You should be able to create files in either nano or vim. You can copy and remove files by using cp or rm command. You can make directories or delete them with mkdir or rmdir. Also, you should know how to move and rename files and directories with command mp. <laughs>